Hello, welcome back to my channel. Just in case you're new here, my name is Kay and I make videos about using my happy planner and my budget planner. Today, I'm going to um, share a little bit of my 2025 budget planner and what I've done to set this up. But first of all, um, cheers. If you know me, you know I'm an early riser and man, this time change has me messed up. So for the last couple of days, I've been up at 2 a.m. The good thing about waking up at 2 a.m. is you get so much done before your workday begins. So let me have some coffee. Cheers. Mm. Owie, that's hot. Um, just burnt my lip. <laughs> okay. Um, so how are y'all doing? I hope you're okay. Uh, the week has been pretty intense for me. I'll make a week in review video for you, but really long work days. But that's okay. All good and um, working towards my goals. Okay, this is my 2025 budget planner. It is the same budget planner as my 2024 budget planner. This one, of course, is a lot thicker. Um, when I, when I, what I did is when I started using this planner from Kel of a Plan in 2024, I loved it. I, I, I loved everything about it. I don't, I've shared in here before, I don't use all of the pages in it and I do insert some extra pages to work on, but I have just loved using this planner. So I, in 2024, went out and bought a, one for 2025 months in advance, which was a good thing because she ended up running out. She does have a new uh, version of the planner for um, the new year, but um, I'm glad that I was able to get this. So a couple of things I've done differently this year for 2025 with the lessons learned. Um, in case you haven't seen my my story timeline of how I started budgeting, I'll share with you. Um, I have been a lifelong planner, but something I've never really planned out were my finances. And I'm definitely seeing the benefit of doing this. In October, I just happen chance came across a Dave Ramsey October of 2023 sorry I happen chance uh came across a podcast by Dave Ramsey and was just immediately obsessed um oh dear I have marker on my hand um so in October of 2023 I started my journey to become debt free and I have learned so many lessons since then. I look back to myself in October 2023 and some of the notes I made originally and um, I just have to smile. Um, some of the lessons were hard lessons. Some of them were really helpful and good lessons. Um, but nonetheless, they're all lessons. And I feel as I step into 2025, I'm much better equipped to look at this and, and work towards my goals. So... Let me just share with you some things that I've done so far. One big change for me this year is I am going to start to use these tracking pages of what I'm paying month by month by month. I didn't last year, but I do want to this year. I see the value in being able to watch, you know, the electricity bill across a year rather than having to go month to month to month. So um, I am going to track these and this planner provides uh, tracking pages for the whole year. So I look forward to doing those. I don't use the annual finances in these, but this is where my work for the new year has kind of begun. I am really focusing on 2025, not buying all the things. That is something that gets me in debt. And it's a, a behavior that I have where when I start a new hobby or start something new, I must have all the things. And I really equip myself for success and then I don't use them or they just go to waste or something like that. So one thing I did buy for 2025 was I bought a new happy planner and I bought inserts and I have received some new stickers and wasabi tape, but it's been pretty low. I, I'm looking around my area to see what else have I purchased. It's been pretty low, low key and, um, uh, one of the first things I did was I, I looked around to what could I recycle? What could I repurpose for 2025 as I was making my buy list? I bought dividers. I bought dividers for both my financial planner and um, my budget planner and my happy planner. 
Don't regret it. That was a really good purchase. When I was looking around, I'm like, what could I repurpose this year? I bumped into this. It was a mispurchase at some point during the year. And it's kind of like these daily trackers that you can add to your disc binder. And um, I, I never use them. So I thought, okay, well, I do use a lot of extra paper in my binders. So, and that's something I generally have to buy. So I started to repurpose those, which required me to white out everything on top. Um, but, you know, I'm not hating it. I'm, I'm okay with it. A former version of myself would have never done that, just to let you know. I would have bought something that was a good fit for the binder and would have wasted that whole package of, of paper. So um, uh, that's progress. That's pro Just launching this whole binder like this is great progress for me. So in my happy planner, I am doing, um, towards the back of December, I am have been doing some 2025 planning of what I want to see take place in my planners. I'll give you an update on that um, this weekend. But um, I have started to kind of plan out my focus for my budget planner. So the first section of this budget planner, I've you know, kind of just reminded myself of what I really want to do with my budget in 2025, and that is to be hyper-focused. I don't want to overwhelm myself with a bunch of goals, and, you know, I just want to be really, really focused on what it is I'm trying to achieve. So I identified three top priorities for 2025. I want to pay off debt. I want to launch my one-month-ahead binder, and I want to build up my emergency fund. I am Dave Ramsey inspired, but I don't wholly follow the plan. Um, like a $1,000 emergency fund doesn't feel safe to me. And Dave has spoken about this before in a show and, and he's totally right. Um, but I have some, just some past trauma with being in control of my finances and um, I need to feel safe. With what I do, I can't live perpetually what feels like to me on the edge. My financial safety, a sense of safety, a sense of responsibility for my own money, a sense of ownership over my own money, these are all really important experiences for me. So I have to do it in a way that feels safe and um, is a good fit for me. So I am going to work on building my emergency fund this year. Um, that's a top priority. I'll talk about debt when I get to the page. I have some more to say about debt. So some of the things I want to do is I've just made some reminders of some, some big things coming that I need to keep focused on, and that is the personal taxes, the nonprofit taxes, keeping an eye on those auto registrations, um, and um, really get focused on the budget for a couple of binders that I use, um, making sure I'm being strategic with what I'm cash stuffing in those binders. Um, these are just some housekeeping things like prep the one month ahead binder, make labels, um, doing my debt profile for the year, doing my worth profile for the year. Um, I want to go through my cash binders, which I or have already done, but when I wrote this, I hadn't, um, and focus them. I don't want to just have a bunch of miscellaneous envelopes. Um, I really want to hyper-focus those cash binder envelopes. Again, it's all about strategy and focus for me in 2025. Um, and pay the accountant. Need to keep track of that because it's one of our bigger bills for the year. Um, make a long-term savings tracker. I did that. I'll share it with you here in a minute. And merge all debt. I'll talk about in a minute. One of my... Um, I, I set up two things for 2025, which you'll see more when I share my happy planner. But... One of the things was my word of the year is going to be purpose. And my motto, my just kind of little phrase is little by little, a little adds up to a lot. So I just want to keep reminding myself, just keep going, just keep going. I started my debt page. This is this whole debt profile for me is going to be changed from what you've seen in previous videos. And let me tell you why. When I started this debt journey back in October of 2023, I looked at my personal debt. My husband has his debt. I had my debt. And then we had collective debt for our property buy when we bought our piece of land and then when we launched the house build. 
So we kind of had my debt, his debt, house build. And when I've been looking at my debt throughout 2024, I've just been looking at my personal debt. And I really come to mature throughout the year recognizing it's all our debt. My debt, his debt, house debt, property buy debt, it's all ours. So I think in, uh, I'll make a video about it, but I think in 2023 when I started this, my personal debt was about $36,000 maybe. And I did a debt update a, a couple of months ago, and I think it was about the same, only I was adding my personal debt plus the debt for the property build and the house build, that initial before we opened up a mortgage loan or a, a construction loan. Um, so I knew I had paid off about $15,000 of my personal debt because it was just about equaling out. So what I'm starting to do now is combine the debt. So I'm going to I'm going to merge them. Um and what I'm going to start to merge is my personal plus all of the property build, house build and um what my husband and I um have been working on together. So my debt profile is going to change, but I think it's a much more accurate profile and a, just a better mindset of instead of saying mine, his, um, that's just, you know, the, the property bill, <laughs> the construction debt, that's just, I don't know who that belongs to. <laughs> I'm not going to own that <laughs> on my debt um, story, but I, I am. I am going to own it all and um, my hu hubby and I are going to work together to get this paid off. But something that did come up for me as I started to kind of combine these debts is what feels very feasible to me is, sorry, nose wipe. What feels very feasible to me is setting the goal of making sure I pay my debt down by $15,000. That feels like I can do that. So that's just a, a baseline goal of mine. $15,000, whatever this merging looks like, I want to see it come down $15,000. And that's just my contribution. Hubby hasn't yet done his 2025 forecasting, so I don't know what his will be. But that's my goal. I know that is feasible. I know if I'm being mindful, I can pay down debt $15,000. Let me pause this just for a minute so I can blow my nose. Now there's plenty of other, you know, more space on this planning page. So what I want to come come in and do, you know, maybe each quarter is check in with this. How am I doing? Because I, I really want to grind this out, um, but I don't want to set up unrealistic goals for myself. I did this in 2024. I can do it in 2025, but let's see how much I can go over it. I'm going to do my best. Okay, in the next section of this, I did some homework and prep work on my binders. For each page here under this next section of my budget planner, I made a page for my cash binders. Um, all of my cash binders that I do. So my first binder is my personal binder. You know what? I just had this free floating random thought as I'm talking to you. Like, is this even interesting? Does this interest anybody? I don't know. Um, it, I'm having, I have fun with it. I hope it's interesting to you. I set up my personal binder page and again, I'm just hyper-focusing on a couple of goals for each one. I'm not going to overwhelm myself this year with all of these goals that I, I won't be able to achieve. So for my personal binder, I want to save up in my dental fund $600. I, it's going to happen at any time. Um, I'm going to have some serious dental work done. I know it. I'm probably going to lose my teeth. I live with a pretty severe dental disease. Um, and you can see here from all of 2024, I didn't do a very good job at saving for this. So um, I've got to start focusing on that. I do carry dental insurance, but you know how that works. It's not going to cover, you know, but a slice of that pie. So that's my goal there. And then in my savings account, I want to save $2,500. What I do with my savings um, is you'll see it on my long-term savings. And it was in a video that I had made previously. I kind of squirrel away, save up, save up, save up. And then I apply it to debt. Save up, save up, save up, apply it to debt. Um, 
in addition to the snowball. So once I get a chunk, I apply it. But that's my goal for the year. I want to see $2,500. And that would be a big deal for me because last year, if you recall, I did a really bad job with savings. Um, you'll see that in a minute in my long-term savings. I did not do a good job. It wasn't a focus for me. This year it's going to be. What I was kind of doing over here on this page is I went through the binder and I looked at the envelopes that I had set up. And then I just kind of thought, do I need any more envelopes? Is something else coming up for me personally that I need to cash stuff for? Am I happy with this? And I checked them all off. I'm not going to change anything on my, my personal binder. I'm still going to be hyper-focused on these five envelopes. And then what I do, did over here was I just kind of made a laundry list of some things I need to do in this binder. I want to replace all of my ledgers, 2024 with 2025. And then next month in December, I'm going to go through all of my cash binders and I'm going to empty out all the cash and get it to the bank or leave it. So that's kind of what I did, just a roadmap here of here are the envelopes. I'm going to move my dental care, whatever I have at, let next month into long-term savings. I'm going to leave whatever money I have in these, two, um, these three envelopes in the binder and then I'm going to move my savings to long-term savings as well. Um, so that's just kind of a list of what I want to do. And then over here, I just made a list of where the cash binder was right now as of October 2024. Um, I haven't yet stuck cash stuff for November, so that's a closeout for October. And then I'll come over here in January after I um, empty those, leave those, and I'll have a 2025 starting point of where the binder is. And then I just did this for each binder. I have my personal binder. I have my holiday savings binder. It's this one here. And um, I set up one goal. I just wanna save ahead for Christmas. You can see here that I was checking off the envelopes, kind of doing in that inventory. This was a, a save, give, spend initiative that I started mid-year. Um, that I was inspired by Dave Ramsey's book and just wanted to kind of move into 2025 with the, the mindset of save, give, and spend um, to have a healthy relationship to money. And I'll close that, that initiative here next month. And you can see again over here, I've got housekeeping as well as the envelopes, what I want to leave in the envelopes versus what I, where I want to move money and whatever I have in Thanksgiving is going to go to household next month. Um, actually, this month it will go to my household. I have different bank accounts set up at my credit union. One of those is just labeled household. And uh, it's my buffer money as well as money that I, I'm going to be using. So, of course, I'm going to be using Thanksgiving money, whatever I've saved up this month. Next month I'll be using Christmas money, whatever I saved up. And then New Year, of course, I'll be using that money to buy a bottle of champagne. And so that will go to household. Long-term savings, These are that's that initiative um, for the savings, going to go to long-term savings. The spend is going to go to my fund money envelope. And the give, I'm going to be donating at year end. And then some housekeeping. And again, this is where I am in, in October um, in January, of course, this profile will all change. I will have done all of this, but I'll kind of, you know, document where I start at the new year. My next binder is my sinking funds binder. And um, again, you see the same kind of layout. Um, I'm going through my envelopes. I have two more sinking fund envelopes I need to, to create. I kind of made when they're going to be due. Um, the money that I need to save up for them. And I was looking over here just on, because right now I have like registration money in my Luna envelope. That's our little trailer. It, but I'm going to be um, paying it next month. So that's going to go to zero. So I was just making a note of like, okay, for Luna, I need it for December of 2025. And I was just kind of chronologically trying to figure out which sinking fund needs to be prioritized over the others because it's coming due first. And it um, looks like need 2026, May 2025, 2026, June, September. Looks like the first one I'm going to have is in the spring of 2025 sinking fund bill. And again, you see the same thing here that I did, just some housekeeping items, 
what anything left in the the envelopes at the end of the year I'm what I'm gonna leave versus what I'm gonna this is gonna go to short-term savings um, it's just some again housekeeping notes one month ahead brand new binder for me this is the binder um, We've looked at it before, it's not set up, and it was just a goal of mine to start that. And my goal for 2025 is full funding. This is in addition to the savings goal, in addition to the, the debt payoff. Um, this was a really challenging. I had to do some journaling about this. I had to decide why this feels so important to me. And it kind of goes back to that place of financial trauma um, from my past and this is just what I need to do for me. I don't know if I'll achieve these goals but I'm certainly going to try. The overall goal for one month ahead is to put aside $5,800 and that would go into my long-term savings. Um, housekeeping here and of course in October I'm starting at zero. There's nothing there. Love Notes is my little business, my little hobby business and um, I kind of went through all my envelopes. I'm going to keep them all. I need to add a website envelope and um, my priority for the year and some housekeepings. And um, what I'm going to do at the end of the year here next month is anything that I have in my Love Notes cash envelopes, I'm going to send it to my Love Note checking account and um, start the new year fresh with everything will go back down to zero. So for me, it's about next month's going to be a really big month because I'm going to be emptying out my envelopes, resetting them back to zero. In most cases, you'll see some notes previous where I said I'm going to leave that. Um, it's like an active envelope. So, But I'm going to reset them all to zero and start the new year again. <coughs> and I think this is the last thing that I've set up so far. Yeah, it is. Is You can see here I'm continuing to recycle that paper. I'm going to keep doing that. I'm not going to let that paper go to waste, nor am I going to buy new paper. Um, this is just a long-term savings account ledger. Because my long-term savings is mixed with emergency fund money, other savings money, um, I live kind of like in this perpetual state of anxiety that as I move money from my cash binders over to my long-term savings account, I'm going to forget what's over there. Like, I'm going to forget that, hey, the prime renewal is coming due in January. You already saved that up in your um, sinking funds, and you already put it in your long-term savings. So this was just a ledger of what we did throughout the year and saved up in our cash envelopes, and I moved to long-term savings. You can see here um, the savings that we moved over for 2024 was $500, which is nothing. Um uh, we just didn't, I, we like, like you and me, we <laughs> were in this together. Um, uh, we, me, I didn't do a great job at savings. Um, what you won't be seeing here is, um, what was utilized to pay for the storm damage here on the property, what was utilized to pay for the, um, animal health care emergencies um, that is you know gone so thankfully we did have savings and thankfully that prevented us from going into debt further having to use credit cards to pay for those things so um, it's a starting point it's not great um, but that's just what I want to keep track it with what I want to keep track of because of course, sitting in my, again, sitting in my long-term savings is my emergency fund money. And I don't, I want to keep clear on emergency fund, long-term savings from sinking funds to be used for bills, to be moved over to the household account when the bill comes due. Um, so that just gives me peace of mind, just refreshing my memory as to what extra did I put in long-term savings that shouldn't be part of what I'm seeing as um, emergency fund. And that's it. I haven't done anything with these pages so far. Um, I feel like I've made good progress. I'm happy about this. I'm going to continue to make notes. Um, I like how I'm making this binder my own. I like how I'm documenting an ending point and a starting point for the new year. I feel as I get 
more experienced with this this budgeting that it gets sharper and more in detail and a little bit more goal focused and um, that just makes me happy. We have to celebrate our accomplishments, right? Even if they're small, big, an accomplishment is an accomplishment. And just remember my 2025 saying, um, a little, um, what is my 2025 saying? What's the exact saying? I need to get this right now because I know I'm gonna be saying it all throughout the year. Here we go. Oh boy, happy planner, 2024 happy planners, pretty chunky. Okay, here it is, 2025 saying, can you see it, there you go. Little by little, a little becomes a lot. And that's a really good thing to remember. When I was a couples therapist, um, this is something I really had to help couples work on that, you know, we can't, may not be able to repair this in a big way in a little bit of time, you know, but what we can do is we can make progress to that big goal. And generally for a couple that might be to increase intimacy or feel safer together or be more empathetic to each other or something like that. So we would, you know, kind of create these little by little action steps. What can we change today that will move us towards that goal, to move us towards that thing? And it's always been so easy for me to talk to people about that and really feel that to be an authentic way of pursuing something. But I just haven't been kind to myself and applied it to myself. It's like, no, I, that's good for others. But for me, I've got to take these giant leaps and make this incredible process, progress and be like the superstar. No, I got to let that go. Um, a kindness to myself. So little by little, a little becomes a lot. And I have seen this in 2024. Little by little, I've been changing. If you've been following my videos, you will have seen that change. Um, you will have seen so many mistakes and so many ways that I looked at things that have just changed. Like I don't see it anymore. Like my dad, I, how silly is me, him, and this debt over here? Well, it doesn't even exist. I'm not going to count it. <laughs> um, anyway, it's all um, evolving, changing as a human being. And I, I happen to believe that change is a good thing. It's hard, but it's a good thing. And allowing yourself to change creates what's called a transcendent response. You become bigger than those things um, and you transcend, you move up to a new level. So um, anyway, enough about that. The therapist in me is coming out. I'm out for transcendent changes. I'm out for recognizing the little steps. I'm out for celebrating my achievements. I'm, I'm out. My mission is to be kind to myself, show myself compassion, and um, find these, these times of peace and joy, whatever... Um, you know, is bringing that into my life. I want to bring more, invite more of that in. I am so motivated for 2025, y'all. Really, really motivated. I'm in a good place. And even though my, my life is intense, my gosh, my life is intense. If, if I had time to share with you what my day looks like, intense. Rarely do things go right for me. But, but here's the thing. Um, it doesn't impact me like it used to when I was younger. And that's something really beautiful about um, being 55 years old is my perspective is changing. What, what influences me and moves me and upsets me is all changing. I want to show you something that I just made in my happy planner. I'm going to give you a sneak peek at the weekend review, but I made this note this week. I'm listening to The Godfather um, on Audible as I drive to work. I commute in case you haven't seen my, my videos. And um, I've been listening to The Godfather and the death scene of The Godfather just, I don't know, it just resonated with me. It's silly, I know. But, you know, throughout the whole book, they're setting up this character that's just, you know, perceived as one thing. And then in his final moments, um, you never see a softening of this character. But in his final moments, he, you know, looks up to his son and he just says, life is so beautiful. And then he, he dies. And 
I was so moved by that because you know what? Life is so beautiful and I don't want to wait until my, my dying breaths to recognize that and to express that to people. Life is so beautiful and I am privileged to live every moment that I do live and I don't want to lose sight of this. Guys, 2025 is going to be our year, right? We're going to do this. We're in it together. And I think my coffee's gotten cold now, but, and probably this video is much too long and probably it, it's not as entertaining as I would like it to be. And um, uh, just thank you for your grace with that. Thank you for being here with me. I've shared before on this channel. Um, I feel like you're my friends and I've never had friends or community for my geeking out on planning and, and organizing and um, yeah, these things, budget community, and I watch your videos. I listen to you while I work. Um, uh, yeah, you guys are just always constantly with me and um, I just love it. Um, life is so beautiful. Looking forward to 2025 and journeying through that with you all. Whatever may come, we're going to move through and um, we're going to stay positive and um, get the most out of our days. Thank you for joining me this morning. Believe it or not, it is not even 3 a.m. yet. <laughs> just so, this is crazy, guys. This is just crazy talk. Um, but that's okay. I get extra time in my day and how, how lucky am I to have that. Until the next time we speak, which will be a cash stuffing video, and then I'll do my weekend review and my happy planner. Um, but until we speak the next time, I hope that you are well, and um, may you be blessed.